Hey, this is Orin Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Eberts, welcome to our first NodeKit for After Effects tutorial. NodeKit is a script that performs a series of actions that make quick work of creating complex node-based charts and diagrams. I'll do a quick run-through to give you an idea what it can do in its default settings. First thing you need to do is pick your font, size, and color in the character window. Then, go to the text section and click Do It. Go to Shapes. Click Do It Again, Layout, Lines, and Animate. And you come up with this random node animation in just a few seconds. To tweak it, you can manually move around the nodes or go back to the layout, change the layout, or even add new nodes or connect nodes with additional lines. The timing and the direction of the lines is triggered by the later of the two nodes it connects. So if you slide a marker later, then the lines wait for that node to animate on and then connect to it. You can see how fast and flexible the system is. Its strength lies in that it doesn't make you work within preset formats, which is perfect for creating a wide range of charts, diagrams, brackets, or whatever you might need. So let's go over the sections. The first one is the text section. I want to point out that you don't really need to use this section. That's why we're not defaulted on it. You can import content from Illustrator and Photoshop as long as when you import it, use the Composition Retain Layer Size option. But if you do decide to use the text generator, which is probably the easiest way to create text, all you have to do is pick your font, size, and color, and click Do It. It allows you to create text based on lines, words, or letters. It's also a great way to use image-based fonts, which I'll go over in a little bit. Once you've created or imported content, you want to place them into nodes. So your next stop is the shape section. This is the one section that needs to be used to make it recognizable as a node for any of the other sections in the script. So even if you import layers already in nodes, you still need to run them through the shape section. And if that's the case, all you have to do is set it to none. If you decide to use the built-in shapes, you have a bunch of basic shapes to choose from. I'm not going to go over some of the more obvious options, but there's a couple checkboxes I want to go over. The first is consistent size. This will use the largest layer as the basis for creating consistent size nodes. This seems to be the most common setting, especially for text. If you end up having wildly different size content, you might want to uncheck it and see if that fits your needs any better. It will result in nodes tailored to the size of each layer. Crop image is great for images you want to fill the node with. It will scale the shape to fit the layer's height or width, whichever is the smallest measurement. I'll give you a good example. We'll go back to text and get an image font and generate some layers using letters. Now if I go back to shapes and turn crop image on, it will result in neatly fitting images inside the nodes. Once you've created your nodes, you'll notice that a cyan node control layer has been created and placed at the top of your timeline. The nodes themselves are labeled aqua. All the nodes are parented to the control layer, and if you select it, you'll see a bunch of pseudo effects that control some of the global image and shape transformations, so you can globally tweak things easily. Now if you go into the project window, you'll find a NodeKit folder with all the node pre-comps. They are composite of a couple shape layers and copies of your content which are linked to the node control layer in the master comp. When you select individual nodes, you'll find additional effects controls if you want to manipulate them individually. And of course, you can always use regular transformation controls on the node control or the nodes themselves. This can be done at any point using any of the script's actions. If you unshy the master, you'll find the original content locked and shied with their video switch off. If you ever want to restore them for some reason, we've supplied a separate script called NodeKit Content Cleaner, which you can run from your window dropdown. It will restore your content to its original condition. After you've generated your nodes, layout can be used to design the look of the diagram. Technically, you don't need to even use this section at all if you're importing art that's already laid out or you just want to move things around manually. Or you can even use a third-party script that does something different than what NodeKit offers. Layout has three main options, random, radial, and linear. 
each of these sections have a few things in common. The first one is the units of measurement. On all of these, we use the comp size. It's relative. So the bigger the comp, the larger the space there is to work with. Layout will treat the first node in the stack, if nothing is selected, or the first selected node as the anchor. So when you click Do It, that will remain in place and the other nodes will be distributed in relation to it. Another thing they have in common is they share the same order and scale systems. Scale has three settings. Constant, if you want all your nodes to be scaled the same amount. Random, which would give you a random setting within the min and max amounts you input. And first layer max, which will scale the first layer selected, or if nothing is selected, the first layer in your comp, your anchor, the max amount, and the rest the minimum amount. Let's go over the layouts. Random. Random will give you an arbitrary layout that does its best to avoid overlap. If your nodes are too big to allow for that, there's some unavoidable overlap which can easily be fixed by just moving them around manually. Radial. Radial will arrange your nodes in a circle with the first node serving as the center node. Direction controls dictate where the second node will be placed on the perimeter of the circle. Top will be put at 12, and so on. If you want to arrange your nodes in an arc, change the algorithm to semicircle. This will activate the slice angle. Think of this as a slice of a pie. The wider the angle, the bigger the slice. The selected nodes will be evenly distributed within that space. Linear will place all the nodes in a line and move them in the direction you've selected in relation to the anchor node. The spacing refers to the pixels between nodes, and the distance is the pixels between the anchor node and the line, which, like the others, is based on a percentage of the comp size. Lines. This is my favorite section, and the main reason we had to make this a CC 2018 and later. Connections control the relations between the nodes. If nothing is selected, it will connect all the nodes in whatever manner you choose, or it can connect specific nodes by selecting the ones you want in the timeline in the order you want them connected. The mode is the way the lines look, or their style, and you really have to play around with them. It's crazy fun to experiment with, and changing them makes your diagrams look very different. Animation gives you a few choices on how they transition on. One very important point, lines will not animate until you run the animate section. It will just be a still. Do not panic. After you click Do It, you'll notice there's a few changes in the timeline. First, the Aqua node layers turn green. That means they have lines connected to them. This will be helpful if you're doing multiple line builds and want to quickly figure out which have been connected and which haven't. Now, if you unshy the comp, you'll see the line layers. You don't need to do any moving or other transformations with these. You can tell which of the lines are linked to which nodes by the label. If we select it, you'll see some effects controls. So if you want to change where they start or where they end up, this is the place to do it. You can also control the look or the animation style of each line here. The purple layer is the main line control layer of that build. Like nodes, every time you create a line build, a new set of these will be created. You'll find a few additional global controls here. Last on the list is Animate, but you can apply Animate prior to applying lines. You can also manually animate the node's transformations. If you just want to animate the line animation, then you need to turn the node motion off. Once it's applied, you can slow down or speed up specific nodes by dragging the second split marker. And as I mentioned before, you can drag the first marker or the layer itself to delay or trigger the node earlier or later. The line animation will adjust accordingly. It's simple, intuitive, and very powerful. So that's the basics. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. You can download a free trial at aescripts.com. From Dan Everts, I'm Oren Zucker. Thanks for watching.